Okay, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, what happened in Rudder in 2018 and what will happen in the following year or years. Uh, so this talk is a bit of a tradition here at Config Management Camp. So um, um, I'm Alexi Mousset. I'm a Rudder developer and I work on the configuration management part in the agent and the system programming, system integration. Uh, so just to know who has uh, used Rudder uh, already. Uh, Okay, so, <laughs> good to know. Um, so I'll start by uh, giving a brief uh, history of what happened uh, in terms of uh, releases. So we, re we released uh, Rudder 4.3 uh, in April. Uh, we already talked about the, the features in Rudder 4.3 last year, so I'm not gonna go into details here, but the, the main things were uh, the technique parameters in the Technic Editor, uh, the inventory extension and uh, the node lifecycle uh, feature. Uh, we also released uh, Rudder 5.0 in 2018. It was in September and we'll get into more details. So in Rudder itself, we changed some uh, mostly uh, internal uh, uh, architectural uh, things, like we added a, a proper system API that was uh, before uh, Bit apart from the, the standard API, and we also uh, uh, automate, automated the <coughs> technique upgrades. So this won't uh, talk to people who have never used Rudder, but uh, before we had to we had a manual step after Rudder upgrade that uh, is now mostly uh, has now mostly disappeared, and we also improved our uh, Windows agent uh, quite much. Um, the next year we'll plan to release for the 5.1 around March or April and we'll see exactly what uh, it will contain. So what happened uh, this year? Um, here's a, a tweet that uh, was uh, sent a couple of weeks ago. We actually changed our website. This may seem like a, a detail but it, it was the end of a very long process that uh, kept us uh, busy uh, a part of the year that uh, uh, implied a lot of change uh, inside Rudder and also outside Rudder. So one of the big uh, focus of uh, Rudder 5.0 were plugins. Uh, we actually um, developed the plugin ecosystem and we released a lot of new plugins uh, this year. Uh, so here you can have a brief look, but if you want to know more, uh, you need to <laughs> come see Benoit's talk uh, just after and he'll get into more details about which plugin we released, how do they work, how you can install and use them. So I won't go into much details here. Um, one of the, the other big change uh, we made was about documentation. Um, uh, it was a complicated topic for Rudder. Uh, this is actually a bit of a, of a time travel. We can start with the, the first uh, uh, Rudder documentation, which was released with uh, Rudder 2.3. Uh, it was a, a single page documentation that contained basically um, the usual stuff for installing and the description of uh, the Rudder interface, but um, and it, it did the job pretty well, although it was uh, aesthetically uh, questionable. Um, <laughs> then uh, we continued developing this documentation, but the, the, the one page doc uh, grew very, very long, and so we decided to start splitting it. So we used... Uh, something a uh, technical stack based on docbook to do this. It worked, but it was not easy. Um, uh, the results were, were not uh, really um, satisfying. Um, we also added an introduction to, to Rudder, but it was not uh, enough. And our documentation really lacked a uh, practical part. So it was really a reference documentation without any uh, practical steps to start using Rudder, do things with Rudder. Uh, it was only a description of the different features. So we decided to focus on the documentation and we basically developed a new documentation website based on a completely different technical stack and we also added a lot of content. Uh, we reworked the reference manual part, we created a getting started guide and we also created a practical, a dedicated to practical example uh, part which is a uh, rudder by example. Um, so this uh, are part of the new uh, docs.rudder.io uh, website. And we also included um, the changelog into the documentation directly. Um, so this is this has 
really become uh, the, the central uh, entry point for Rudder users in order to um, get to know about features, how to do things, um, also to get help. Uh, we really developed um, the, the interaction with the community by uh, starting a new um, channel uh, for uh, discussing with users. Uh, we already had an IRC uh, room, but it was not really uh, suited for newcomers. So we opened the Gitter um, chat room uh, in September, and it was actually uh, quite a success because it helped us a lot uh, help newcomers in, in Rudder. Uh, beforehand, it was we provided a link to the web IRC uh, view, but it was uh, really uh, a problem uh, for newcomers. And now uh, this Gitter room also has um, public uh, archives which uh, allow uh, searching for uh, previously discussed uh, problems uh, easily. Um, we also changed uh, a bit our release uh, model um, to, to for this. So we stopped uh, the ESR extended support releases uh, version to only have one standard um, release uh, uh, duration. Um, and we also uh, moved uh, support for uh, old operating systems, unsupported operating systems into uh, the subscription only access, uh, which allowed us to know which ones were actually used and actually stopping supporting uh, a lot of old systems that uh, uh, cost a lot to support and that are not actually used by any uh, router uh, user. So this uh, helped us uh, uh, get more time to test the, the operating systems that were actually used. Um, we also improved our tooling, the tooling around Rudder with a new uh, repository uh, server that now centralizes everything that was previously split across uh, uh, two or three different locations. Uh, we still have our bug tracker. And in terms of infrastructure, we also modernized things a lot. We added IPv6 for all public services, uh, HTTPS uh, basically everywhere, uh, things like, uh, like this. Um, in terms of uh, infrastructure, we also added a public status page uh, for more transparency and uh, better monitoring of what really uh, impacts uh, users. Um, okay, so this is uh, pretty much all for uh, what we did this year. So to sum this up, uh, we created uh, two main entry points for um, Rudder uh, users or people who want to know more about Rudder, where previously we had a lot of different applications, websites, sources of documentation. Now, if you want to learn about Rudder, you can go to our website, www.rudder.io. And for using Rudder, it's docs.rudder.io. And the chat is really the, <coughs> the what makes the link uh, between the developer team and the, and the community. And Rudder, which was mostly a uh, a monolith uh, software is now more a platform uh, that uh, can be extended using plugins, subscription, or uh, integration with, with uh, other types of uh, plugins. So that's all for, uh, that's basically what we, we did this year. So a lot of changes around Rudder and a bit of changes in Rudder's ar architecture to enable it becoming a platform uh, and less uh, a monolith. So what's next? Uh, that's uh, mostly the, the, the interesting stuff. Um, so we'll first talk about the Technic Editor, uh, which is, uh, for those who don't know Rudder, it's the, the visual editor that allows creating uh, policies, configuration policies from uh, base building blocks. Uh, and this Technic Editor was improved, uh, well, will be improved in the next version and was already in the version that was released uh, just a couple of weeks ago. So this is a a uh, very short uh, future. So what we added uh, was a lot of uh, uh, practical things uh, for users, like a clone uh, clone button for generic methods, uh, which allows uh, quickly uh, replicating uh, uh, configuration. We added a visual display of uh, conditions, so it will be uh, uh, in the next release. Uh, so you can see the conditions directly from the methods list, which avoids uh, having to to get in, into every method to, to check if there are any conditions. And we also added a report component field here. Uh, this allows uh, basically documented, uh, documenting a generic methods by changing the display name here, but also 
uh, changing what will be displayed in the reporting in the compliance so it allows um, having a meaningful compliance uh, for example uh, instead of having a I edit uh, file uh, edit SSH uh, configuration file you can uh, specify uh, what is actually done for example disable uh, SSH root access uh, and it then will be displayed in the compliance bar we also added a documentation display just inside the technic editor uh, uh, so it avoids having to switch between the docs and the, the editor and we also added a filter for generic methods uh, this will be a lot easier to find methods now there are quite a, a lot of them and if you want to know more about uh, our UI UX design process you can follow Raphael Stoke uh, just before uh, after the break and we'll get into more details uh, we also did. We will also uh, do a lot of uh, cleanup and uh, rationalization for uh, Rudder 5.1. Um, for example, we'll switch to system D units for all uh, um, server services, which will allow for a lot of uh, cleanup. We will merge a lot of Git repositories into a single one for easier tracking of uh, changes. Um, all of this uh, already allowed uh, removing like 5,000 lines of packaging code. Uh, so this is uh, way better um, in terms of maintenance and complexity. Uh, this is actually the dependency graph of Rudder packages. So everything which is in blue or yellow, or blue or green, is in 5.0 a uh, Rudder package, and the red one are uh, the system dependencies. And in 5.1 we are moving to this. So as you can see, it's a lot simpler. Uh, what we did is to merge six packages that were not really independent. Um, so we merged them into a single package, which allowed a lot of, for a lot of uh, simplification, and it will be released in uh, Rudder 5.1. Um, so these were for the, the short uh, short run topics that will be uh, that are almost um, already done. Now I'll uh, talk a bit more about um, long run topics. Uh, so this may uh, Rudder users will probably understand the slides. This slide, um, we're basically we were basically uh, relying on syslog for uh, uh, reporting. So the agent, every time the agent runs, it uh, reports about what uh, is the current state of the, the configuration items and the changes it may have made. And this is currently uh, sent to the server using syslog. Uh, this is uh, a problem uh, at several levels. It's a security problem because it's mostly uh, um, unencrypted. Uh, it's uh, an operational problem because it's really hard to debug. Uh, basically, when logs uh, don't arrive, it's really hard to check and see where uh, they are blocked. Uh, so we'll definitely get rid of syslog in Rudder 5.1. Uh, how will we do this? So I'll uh, explain a bit more uh, what, by what we will uh, replace it. So basically, this is the, the, the high-level uh, Rudder uh, network uh, model, so we have nodes uh, where uh, we run the router agent that can connect to a relay or a root server. Uh, a root server is basically the router engine with the whole web application plus a relay. So actually a node is always connecting to a relay. Uh, and if we get into a bit more details, uh, we can see the network flows that happen. So we have the whole policy um, network flows that are uh, custom uh, co file copy protocol inside TLS on the 5,309 uh, port. So this is uh, what is uh, used to copy policies between uh, agent and server. We have the inventory which is sent over HTTPS and uh, the reports of a syslog. So we'll basically replace syslog by HTTPS uh, just like we do for the inventories. Uh, but we will also improve this uh, a bit because we will uh, sign the reports like we currently sign the inventories. So the server will be able to validate that the reports it receives are actually coming from a given node, uh, which was not the case with uh, syslog. And we will also uh, uh, validate um, the relays uh, certificate uh, by using, by default, a trust on first use uh, policy where we will uh, take the public key of the of the server and use it afterwards to validate uh, we are actually speaking to our uh, official uh, uh, server. Um, so this is for the the security point of view. And in terms of uh, software architecture, 
we will uh, actually add a new uh, service, a new daemon on the relay servers that will handle uh, um, reading the reports and inventories and actually following them uh, to the radar engine or directly into the database for the reports. Uh, this will allow for um, so security because we'll be able to validate um, uh, signatures. Um, we will also um, uh, be able to uh, add more uh, continuity into Rudder. Rudder is a continuous configuration tool, but uh, some actions actually take five minutes. Uh, like inventories currently, you will have to wait five minutes before they get uh, sent into the, the server. So this will, this new uh, service will take care of um, um, actually uh, doing things instantly. Um, in the long run, it will be more scalable uh, because uh, the, the, the syslog uh, reporting is actually quite inefficient in terms of compression and the actual uh, report format is also quite inefficient. So we'll be able to, uh, to improve this a lot in the future. And um, this, um, this, um, this new uh, architecture, well, in the first, uh, in 5.1, it will allow uh, getting rid of syslog, but this new component will allow a lot of uh, new features in the, the future. For example, new types of uh, information. Currently, we have reports and inventories, but we, we may imagine uh, sending partial inventories or uh, uh, getting uh, on-demand reporting about specific uh, topics from our nodes, and this will use the, the new protocol and the new uh, server component. Um, okay, so I'll talk about uh, configuration modelization now. Uh, the previous change was mostly internal and users probably won't notice it much, but this is uh, what will uh, really matter. So the first uh, change will be the policy versioning. Um, so actually, uh, if you have already used Rudder, uh, you can you know that uh, all these are the Rudder configuration items, basically groups, rules, directives, techniques. Um, a Rudder server um, compiles everything into uh, policy files uh, that are available to the the machines, and um, the the old configuration has a single version number basically. And each time something changes, for example, if I modify an item, for example, a directive, uh, the whole configuration of the Rudder server will change, and it, then basically the configuration number will. Uh, uh, will will change, and the nodes will know there is there is a, a new configuration available. Uh, this was good because it allows us uh, for, to provide a lot of uh, uh, interesting features, but it's a bit um, limited in some uh, cases because that means we can, for example, for our directive A, that means if we change directive A, it will instantly change everywhere on all nodes, and we can't have uh, two versions of the same item. Uh, available at the same time. Uh, it is a problem, for example, if you want to test a new change, you pro often have to duplicate the configuration, make the change, apply it to a subset of the node, test it, and then uh, you can apply it on all nodes. Uh, so it's uh, a bit of trouble, and we want to, to improve this. So what will basically happen is that all uh, Rudder configuration items will get their own uh, history and their own, their own versioning. Um, uh, which will allow keeping track of, uh, of changes. And this will allow, also allow keeping track of dependencies between uh, items and items version. Uh, so this is uh, what we're planning to do. Uh, the good thing is that it will allow for a lot of great features. Uh, we'll have per, histor per item history, so we will be able to explore uh, things uh, more easily. Uh, we'll have more efficient policy recomputation because we will be able to to generate only what is needed, and we'll be able to make uh, a grouped atomic grouped uh, changes. Uh, for example, instead of uh, uh, you have a validation uh, feature uh, in Rudder that allows to propose a change, and the chain needs to be valid validated by another user, like a pull request. Uh, but this only works for uh, an individual change, like uh, changing one directive. Uh, and this uh, policy versioning will allow making uh, uh, several changes in the same uh, atomic change. So this will allow a more, lot more powerful uh, um, change handling in Rudder. 
Uh, this will al also allow um, moving a uh, proposed change from one server to another and taking all the dependencies with it uh, automatically because the, the, the Rudder server will know which uh, version of which other items the, the item we want to, to copy uh, depends on. And this will also allow a progressive rollout uh, where we start deploying new version of the item to our, um, to our nodes. Uh, and then depending on the outcome, we can continue applying it or just uh, revert it without having to duplicate everything like uh, people often uh, do uh, currently. Um, the other um, configuration modelization uh, change we are planning is codenamed the uh, Redlang, which stands for Red Language. Uh, so currently we are using um, uh, two different config configuration language, one for our Unix systems, one for the Windows systems. Um, so basically we're using existing agents. Uh, the thing is, uh, it has reached its limits and we are um, actually uh, having problems that we can solve with the, the current uh, languages we are using and we wa also want to be able to directly write code for other that uh, easily run on Windows or on Unix systems. And for this we will uh, develop uh, actually a configuration language dedicated for Rudder. Uh, the idea is that this language uh, won't have its uh, own agent. We want to be able to compile it into other agents' uh, languages. Uh, so for now, it will be our current Unix and Windows agents, but it will allow uh, easy extension in the future to other agent uh, types. And we're currently uh, uh, thinking about MGMT support, for example, which is a new agent that has really uh, interesting uh, features. And this, this feature might allow us to do it quite <coughs> easily. Uh, comparing to what it is now. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. Um, I know the brother still used the C is engine engine. Yes. I sure. Know, right? yeah. um, I know the C is engine engine is also there for Windows, but then they stopped uh, developing, and I know it's oh. actually used throughout the world, and it's not perfect. It's not. Yes, we we actually used it in the past, and it was. Uh, um, yes, suboptimal. So we develop our own uh, agent uh, mechanism based on Windows DSC and Windows native uh, configuration features. Uh, so yes, that's why we have uh, different uh, languages. Uh, no, it's actually written in PowerShell and DSC. So yes, it's completely. We we're actually using the native uh, native uh, new stuff that comes with uh, PowerShell four. That allows configuration directly from uh, from PowerShell and DSC. So this is a first, uh, very very first uh, uh, look at what it might look like. Um, the the main, the two main ideas uh, are that we want to focus on error handling and correctness. Uh, Currently, we are not really satisfied with the, the current state of, uh, of these uh, features in configuration management languages. We want to be able to validate as much uh, our policies as much as possible at compile time, which means on the server before deploying uh, the policies to the to the nodes. Uh, this will uh, allow to break less uh, on the nodes and uh, break uh, uh, early on the server and know what uh, what's wrong. Uh, for example, in case of a missing variable or uh, this kind of a uh, uh, problem. Um, so this will allow detecting uh, errors um, earlier. Um, and we wanted to be able to um, compile the, the rudder features into different uh, target uh, systems um, for a very... Uh, uh, for a, um, a common experience between the different types of agents, which is not exactly the case uh, currently. What will this compile into? Will this compile into the yes, it will be compiled into CF Engine code for the Unix systems and into uh, PowerShell code for Windows, basically. So this will not compile into NCF method or not into the library? This will use NCF, but um, this will be CF Engine code that use NCF. 
uh, at least at the beginning. Maybe we'll change this uh, a bit after afterwards. But in the first version, we'll actually um, use NCF. Uh, and see, we'll be playing CF engine. Yes. Yes, basically, that's what we plan to do. But we will add more. Um, we will add things that are not possible currently because we need the code uh, to stay uh, basically readable by a human. The code we generate, and with this, we'll be able to uh, have more safety mechanisms um, because we'll be able to generate uh, code uh, at compilation. Um, so this will uh, help us have a better error handling than what is. Uh, currently, um, uh, the case in rudder. Uh, this is the rudder language, uh, but it, the compiler doesn't exist yet, so this is uh, what the rudder language could look like. Uh, I just wanted to show some code, but it's, it's really uh, the, the early de uh, development of the, the compiler, so. Uh, no YAML. No YAML, no, 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 no. It's a declarative language with no YAML. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because uh, we want to have uh, proper error handling, and error handling in YAML is not easy to achieve. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like that you're on the, on the path or on the track of developing your own engines for the various platforms. Not actually. Uh, we're more planning to extend this into to more agents, existing agents, uh, okay. maybe to compile into, I don't know, we will think about MGMT because it has really interesting features. and. Yeah. That, that are kind of new. Uh, I mean, Chef and Puppet Agents are good too, but uh, they don't bring much more new stuff than what we already have. So that would allow us to extend to yeah, other um, new new systems. Uh, this is a very big topic, but it's moving quite fast, so it might happen uh, uh, earlier than we might think. And the last uh, topic I will uh, quickly talk about are uh, security vulnerabilities vulnerabilities uh, reporting and remediation. Uh, we plan to add new plugins for uh, um, uh, to uh, integrate uh, CVEs uh, from a package list and be able to uh, automatically uh, upgrade packages that have uh, security vulnerabilities and also to integrate uh, the output from some security auditing tools directly into Rudder and into Rudder compliance. So Rudder compliance could include the configuration plus uh, the compliance coming from a security, uh, specialized security auditing tool. So this is the, the, the last uh, focus for 2019. So that's all for me. Do you have uh, one or two questions? Don't have much time. Yes? Uh, I, I think that will be automatically generated rules. Uh, yes. I think, yes, we will uh, automatically generate rules. Okay, that's all. So, thank you.